is later orchestral transcription. And also, I will mainly focus on one of his famous works, Los Nervos Set Sentimentos, in piano versions and its later orchestral transcription. Um, this is my style of play. According to Maya's book, the orchestral, trans uh, the orchestral technique by Ravels was the fruit of long years of study. And my thanks to Ravel's genius in orchestration. Um, first of all, Ravel's orchestra color was partially inspired by creative exotic spirits such as um, Spanish dance, Basque music, uh, and American jazz. Secondly, Myers also claimed that uh, Ravel's orchestral technique was mostly influenced by Rimsky, Korsakov, and Richard Strauss. Their orchestral music were useful materials for Ravel's technique. And as Maya said, Ravel was an excellent orchestrator. Even he was sensitive to various characteristics of different instruments. Um, Maya said, his orchestral schools are as highly organized as a piece of intricate machinery and as delicately balanced. Nothing is left to chance or to the caprice of individual player or conductor. Also, Ravel evaluated himself as, I am sensitive to music, to every kind of music since I was a child. Furthermore, in Orenstein's book, he particularly mentioned about in Ravel's teaching of orchestration, Ravel frequently used many music schools by Richard Strauss as great models for study and imitation to his students. And also, according to the recall of Manu Rosenthal, one of Ravel's students. Ravel's own copies of orchestra scores by Richard Strauss has completely smeared due to his research of them. And also, once in Ravel's orchestra lesson with his students, Roland Manu, Ravel said to him, in order to know one's own craft, one must study the craft of others. And however, people normally neglected the effect of Ravel's piano version might be another possible factor for his later orchestra arrangement. In fact, a great number of his vocal accompaniment and particularly his piano solo were orchestrated. Deborah claims that Ravel's only, only orchestral compositions are less than his orchestral transcription from piano works. Um, indeed, um, I found a list about some of Ravel's composition works. According to uh, Orenstein, again, almost half of his music um, such as Vanuco Sentimentos, La Tumba de Coupon, La Vals, and the rest of them were reshaped from his piano works to later orchestral pieces. Um, furthermore, some of his keyboard pieces were rearranged and then transcribed as ballet. Um, for example, he recomposed Vals Nobel Saint Sentimentos for his um, ballet works, Adelaide, and also reshaped La Tumba de Cuprian to ballet as well with his same name. Um, these transcriptions of works uh, were not expressly written for the uh, orchestra. Um, therefore, 
Ravel's piano version might be the true composition for all its later instrumental versions and ballet versions. So to speak, uh, the composer's pure uh, orchestra pieces are, are those below, um, including Bellero, uh, Bolero, uh, two piano, con uh, two piano uh, concertos, and uh, over two to Sararazada. Um, six pieces in total. And Arenstein also points out that uh, as a pianist, Ravel used piano as the pri privileged instrument in his compositions. But after he completed his manuscript on piano, remodeling music is one of Ravel's interesting predilections. Meanwhile, um, one remarkable thing is Ravel not only addicted himself to the rearrangement for his own works, but he also liked to orchestrate other composers' piano music. Um, Ravel once wrote to Debussy's widow for the permissions of making orchestration. He said to her, Saraband is very orchestral. And Ravel's orchestrations of music by other composers contains um, the picture by the picture by Mussorgsky and the carnival by Schumann and also Saraband by Debussy. Compared with original versions, um, normally later transcriptions were put in a lower place, but surprisingly his later orchestral transcription, either from his original piano works or from other composers' music, in fact, are very successful, and even some of them are more popular on the stage than their piano versions. As Lawrence said, Ravel was a born transcriber. Also, Les Passer stated that Ravel's orchestral transcription of Debussy's work, Saraband, is a ample proof of developed development to Debussy. Mm. In the sections of Fill the Gap, um, my analyze including several examples in my research paper but we don't have much time uh, in this presentation. So now I'm going to show you one of those examples. If get into the comparison analyze between piano versions and orchestral version, almost all of Ravel's innovative trends uh, in his color uh, or, or tempo and technique was first appear in his piano works. If we look at uh, the example on the screens, Bonobo's Senti A Sentimentos by Ravel, which was um, published in 1911 as an original version for piano. Um, the clear explanations for the opening of the first vaults was given by composer's lesson with Roland Manu. Uh, he was one of Ravel's students, as I mentioned before. Ravel stated the opening actually is a linear, um, uh, is a linear progression. Um, technically, for most piano performers, this kind of repeated chords is a bit challenging to release a big sound with a very relaxed arm. Um, uh, especially if play it with a um, linear progression. Lilie once makes a, a comment on the beginning of Ravel's Vulnerable and Sentimentos. A linear progression that implied from B to F sharp 
and also from A to E. Should we play in one movement by use very relaxed risk and arm? Uh, now, how about uh, we have a listen for the radio and see what that means. As we can see, if we look at uh, if we look carefully, the pianist hands um, before play the first chords. Um, performance hands will not touch the keyboard, but raise his arms to play the first phrase in one action. Especially, it's emphasized the first three repeat chords. Um, okay, now. Uh, let's move on to the orchestral versions uh, of Vos et Sentimentos. Uh, he, was pu uh, he was published in 1912. According to Lawrence, in the rehearsal of symphony orchestra, before the premiere uh, of this piece, Ravel also required strings players use ricochet technique, ricochet. Um, to play the first three repeated chords in the opening. Um, also, we can have a look, particularly it's, uh, the string family's part. Um, also, we can have a look for the video, the orchestra transcription. As we can see in the video, um, all the strings player finish three chords in one bow. Da, 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 da. Uh, the ricochet technique, which applies in strings families, is very similar with the piano technique, which is used in the original waltz. Uh, Ravel's piano technique might partially inspire Ravel to adopt the ricochet technique into these orchestral works. Oh. Okay. So, overall, uh, in conclusion, uh, Ravel's brilliant uh, orchestral colors and technique were not only inspired by his study of other composers and exotic uh, elements but also as a result of his uh, original piano versions. Um, the interrelationship between the original keyboard versions and the orchestra transcriptions can be found in Ravel's piano works through my study. Um, also for piano performance, Ravel's later orchestra works, in fact, revealed the sound world of his imagination because uh, the true music was highly refound in Ravel's orchestra pieces. In other words, it could be the good reference for piano performance. And this is my select bibliography for my research. Thank you very much. <laughs>